Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of New Agreement. Except this one is the beginning of something a little bit different. The beginning of a bunch of different conversations focused around the ocean. And today, I'm so pleased to be joined by Ukarapo. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Dave. I met Ukarapo a few weeks ago over Zoom and had one of the most exciting and excellent lessons I've had for quite a while. So I thought we really need to record a conversation, cover some of similar territory and share that with the world. Really appreciate you coming and joining us today. And Thank you. before we get into some of that cool knowledge you were sharing with me and then some of the ideas and showing us some stuff on the screen, maybe you could just give us a bit of your background. Where on earth are you right now? How did you get to this very Zoom call? So my name is Ukarapo Mungunda. Uh, I am from Namibia in Southern Africa. I am a marine biologist. I was born in Vintuk, which is the capital of Namibia. So it's, it's in the center, so no ocean in sight. My passion is to, you know, just make the world a better place, be it land or ocean. I believe if we do our parts, we can make a world, the world a better place. How on earth did you get into marine biology if you're not from the coast? coast. So what was it that led you to think, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to study the oceans? I did not even know about the course up until I started doing it. My earliest memory of seeing the ocean uh, would be uh, probably in high school. My father took us out the one time to Swakopmund and I saw this big pool of water and I was like, wow, and it was just never ending. I was like quite, quite intrigued by it. <laughs> uh, but then after that, you know, we went back to Vintuk, continued with uh, the day to day. And in Varsity, I picked up this paper. It was like fisheries and aquatic sciences. I was like, okay, cool. It had all of the modules that I liked, uh, the chemistries, the physics, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And additional aquatic biology, you know, marine-like modules. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing it, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I continued with it. I never went back. So then you, you yeah. went to your undergrad. And then what is it that you've ended up specializing on? The postgrad was in marine biology. And uh, thereafter, after I came home, you know, tried to look for work and I was unsuccessful. So I was like, you know, let me go back. Let me go back to South Africa and continue, you know, this beautiful marine journey that I've started. But due to financial difficulties, I was unable to go uh, the one year and I tried again. I didn't give up. And then I applied for a master's uh, project at the University of the Western Cape in South Africa as well, where I used acoustic methods to discriminate between jellyfish and other organisms in the water column. And this project came with funding. So I was able to go back. My love for acoustics actually started in undergrad where we learned about bioacoustics and all of this stuff. So my undergrad project actually was using a visual and acoustic methods to identify whales and dolphins along the coast. And that's where I picked up my love for acoustics. Okay. And just for anybody who doesn't quite know what we're talking about, what do you mean yeah. by acoustic and visual methods? This project was comparing the two comparing the visual, what you can see when you go yeah. out, and comparing that with the acoustic, what you can hear. Yeah. So with your own ears or with, with tools or what? With tools, yeah. We'll, okay. we'll, yeah, we'll get into that as well. If the conditions are not good, you won't see as much. You know, if it's a foggy day, you won't see uh, a dolphin behind, you know, the fog. Mm. But you can hear it on the acoustic mm. device. Which is a bit so, different to land, isn't it? Because I can often see things... Yeah. a long, long way away that I wouldn't yes. really be able to hear on land. But That's in correct. the ocean, and I, and I experienced this when we were sailing to COP26, this is what fern, first turned my ears to the idea of acoustics, working yeah. with Steve Simpson at Exeter University, you know, recording the snapping shrimp, basically, to see if they yeah. had moved up the coast. And I was fascinated when he said, you know, you might only be able to see 20, 30 meters underwater, but you can hear these snapping shrimp up to eight miles away. Sound travels better and quicker through the water mm -hmm. than in air. Being able to detect animals, uh, being able to tell them apart using sound is just fascinating to me. I can say from my side, getting inspired at COP26, being on the boat and meeting a load of people there, we've yeah. started to get inspired by the idea of the value of nature that's under the sea. One of the people that John, my partner, reached out to was Samantha at the yeah. Kelp Forest Foundation who connected us because they're yeah. acting as a, a connector around the ocean and around biodiversity yeah. and kelp projects. 
yes. to make sure that the industry or the community of that area of, of work moves forwards. And so I'm so thankful to Samantha that she connected us. But I, okay. I wonder, maybe you could tell us what, what project it is that you're now working for with all of these skills that you've gained, and then we can get into some of the technicals. I am with a company called Kelp Blue. So Kelp Blue is a commercial company looking to grow giant kelp species, giant kelp forests offshore here in Ludritz, Namibia. So this is where I am right now. So this is to restore ocean health and to sequester carbon dioxide. So we will be harvesting 10% of the kelp to make nature-friendly products such as biostimulants and uh, pharmaceuticals and such. I'm looking at assessing what impact the kelp forests may have on the marine life, on the ecosystem, um, on the biodiversity, uh, looking how the ecosystem is looking right now, assessing how it may change over mm -hmm. time as um, the kelp grows. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that using acoustic methods. I see. So just to backtrack there, because the people listening to this, all of this yeah. is going to be brand new. The previous podcasts we've done on new agreements have just been about systemic and systematic thinking. It's not really been about the oceans at all or indeed acoustics. So this is a whole new vocabulary. So I want to go slowly today. I think what you're saying that Kelp Blue's proposition is by farming kelp rather than foraging it, farming it, um, yeah. intentionally planting it and growing it, and then taking off the top section of it every few months, I believe, you will be able to create biostimulants, which I think is like fertilizer for on land projects, land projects, yeah. um, and pharmaceuticals. I don't really know what pharmaceuticals you're talking about, but let's come back yeah. to that. And by doing that activity, creating that revenue stream, it will also have an improved byproduct of improving ocean health, which is what you're doing using listening to the ocean and recording yeah. it to figure out whether or not that is actually happening. Is that right? That, that's correct. The idea is to monitor what is there right now and to keep track if there are any changes as the kelp grows. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. It sounds like when we're talking ocean health, we're talking about food, shelter for fish. Are we basically talking here about biodiversity, about actually creating the conditions for species to grow in number and in variation or is there more to ocean health than that there's definitely always more to ocean health literally guide us through the goggles are on right. is the wetsuit going on i mean what is are you doing it yourself ukarapo are you a good swimmer what are we talking everything, about? everything everything is going to be on everything is going to be on hydroacoustics is the study and application of sound and water be it biotic or abiotic um, characteristics in the water column there are two types of hydroacoustic methods. The one is called passive and the one is called active. So passive acoustics is basically like listening to sound. So it's like a, a recording device that you put out there and it just basically listens to sound. The other application is active acoustics. This involves sending out sound and waiting to listen back for an echo. So the echo sounder transducer transmits the sound, goes off into the water column, and this sound bounces off whatever is in the water column and bounces back and is received by a transceiver. This received echo is what's referred to as backscatter. The backscatter is what is displayed on the screen, and that's what we analyze to identify and isolate animals in the water column. So I send a sound out from my device. It mm -hmm. bounces off whatever material it hits. Yeah. comes back to me affected somehow. By analyzing the change to the sound, we can then try to build up a picture and infer what that material it may have bounced off is, or at least the difference between bouncing off kelp versus bouncing off fish. Adam. Fish, yeah. yeah. That's correct. Different animals, different organisms, different objects in the water column have different um, signatures, mm -hmm. signals. Are we talking about massive multi-million pound cameras? Are you holding a raspberry pie? Are you, <laughs> do you know, are you under there for an hour? Or, you know, what do you, literally, how does it work? So you put it out mm -hmm. and then you retrieve it and you analyze the sound pulses. When we're trying to measure biodiversity, kelp, yeah. the scenario you're trying to deal with here ah. in, in Kelp Blue, it's going to be more the active, isn't it? It's going to be more the transdu that's, transducer that's and trans transceiver that's, that's going to correct. give us the information that we want. You put in a recording before anything changes, then grow some stuff and then do some more recordings, right? That's correct. 
And then I guess you're going to have to try and analyze these. You mentioned you're going to have to try and then analyze the recordings. So yeah. how does that work? How do you actually get into yeah. the analysis once you've got the audio recordings from the ocean? You put the data through various software. Depending on the settings that you provide it, they can pick up what sort of uh, animal has been passing by. With the active, you need what we call a ground truthing to validate what's in there. So we will do a couple of dives and then collect this data. So this data is just going to be like a bunch of data of the entire water column. Mm -hmm. With the dives and the other visual tools that we have, we will say, okay, that section was a lot of jellyfish or this mm -hmm. section was a lot of fish. We train the software to say, okay, from section A to B, identify this as fish because I visually saw that from this depth to that depth, it was fish. Of course, with literature, you go back and you double check these things. And then uh, once you train the software to say, pick this up as fish, pick this up as what, then we'll say the signal belongs to fish. Please isolate that and please give me the biomass of fish. Mm -hmm. Is it possible in that scenario that you end up telling it the wrong thing though like thinking yeah. that this signature belongs to this fish but really it yeah. belongs to a broader group or something like that how do you avoid yeah. accidentally telling it the wrong thing it happens yeah. uh, a lot of species overlap with these signals we do some calculations and we get frequency responses mm. a lot of fish have the same frequency response because jellyfish are such weak scatterers mm -hmm. their frequency response was similar to some of some of the fish species. So what I did was I removed the frequency responses or the signals that I was sure of um, together with some tests, some ground truth thing uh, with literature. I removed everything that I could possibly think of. This is now the isolation process. And then I assumed that the rest is jellyfish. It sounds like the best quality way to ensure accuracy is to combine a data stream with some physical looking you know actually going down there and looking at what you're describing as ground truth um, that's correct and then correlating one against the other to ensure that you're not jumping to crazy conclusions ground and, truthing and, is important yeah mm -hmm. camera traps are always helpful any sort of like uh, visual mm -hmm. is very important yeah it helps you've talked about the frequency response of yeah. stuff in the water do we know what the frequency response of kelp is can we ping a transducer sound out mm -hmm. and bring it back and do we already have a model for knowing what the frequency of kelp is or is this sort of a new territory as of right now i am not too sure of that right now so this mm -hmm. is why i'm going to be doing this study and this is why i'm so excited awesome. about it so there is some literature on kelp acoustics speaking of the frequency response and all of these things not too sure this is what I'm going to find out. Nice. But yeah, literature, the literature has helped me quite a bit. Okay, cool. Well, do keep pinging it through as you find it. Yeah. You know, ultimately, what I want to try to do is, is figure out whether we can measure through data, through acoustics, what kind of kelp is... Uh, is it growing? Is it being invaded by other species? Is mm. it being declined? Do you think that these echo sounders can mm -hmm. potentially provide this for us or do you mm -hmm. think i'm barking up the wrong tree i've seen some papers where the acoustic devices were able to like detect the height of the kelp do you think we'd be better to install a few transceivers and transducers and have the consistency of like in them being installed in the same place to build like an acoustic map let's say of the farm or do mm. you think we would do better to have a roaming you know rov that you send out once every now and again mm. basically replacing a diver but the same model as a diver yeah. um, as opposed to just having an installment of of this data I would think a camera trap would be nice, some camera traps, leaving it there. And if it can operate on solar power, you know, you don't even have to think of the battery and sending it to land in real time, connected to some sort of Wi-Fi, you know, and I can get 24-7 worth of data. Yeah, I would go with that. You're going to be in data heaven. You're going to be Yeah, I'm going to be in data heaven. Yeah, I, you know, I can be like, I can quickly check on my laptop. Oh, 
What do we have here? What do we have uh, around here? Oh, there's a whale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically <laughs> the Matrix. You'll be like one of those operators on the Matrix. So you look like an I operator will... in the Matrix, actually. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah? yeah. He's in. He's in. It's a whale. Would you show us the modeling quick? This is from NOAA. That's how the ping is sent. Mm. And then it maps the water column, uh, maps the ocean floor, picks up whatever species it may pick up. This over here are some different devices as well. The echo sounders that pick up the fish, the devices that we can leave out there. Like this is now one that has been connected to a buoy. So the passive acoustics, the, the, the hydrophone detects uh, whales and dolphins and, you know, their, their signals, their clicks and their songs and their whistles and such. Whereas the active, the one that sends out the ping and listens, that one detects fish. The and buoy then, the on the bottom is a bit more like what we're talking about in terms of installing it at a frame. You know what I mean? It's that kind of idea rather than the roaming one. For me, the two questions I'm leaving today's conversation with for us to yep. discuss more with the rest of everybody that's interested in this is, can we get close to understanding what the frequency response of kelp is, either through literature and or through ground truthing and or mm. through actual sending uh echo sounder transduced frequencies out and we need to figure out whether or not a static or roving device is better i'm hoping that static is the one because mm. i don't i want to get away from that and it sounds like it would be more exciting to have this constant stream of data to, to sort of bring us to close what's in it for you you're obviously energized creative talented amazing and the ocean space is lucky to have you and I'm lucky to be talking with you. You're still early in your career. Where, where do you hope to get to in your in your life and career? My dream is to become the best. <laughs> My dream is to become the best acoustician Namibia has ever seen. I, be so, I believe it. Yeah, I want to become the best at it. I would like more organizations and stakeholders and the government and all of this, more people to be acquainted with what we're doing with Kelp Blue and mm. the bigger goal for carbon sequestration for boosting the biodiversity i like it i like it so acoustician right is that the word yes acoustician yes lovely lovely if and when you become the best acoustician that namibia has ever seen how yeah. would you know how would you be like dave i did it i really am now the best that namibia has ever seen how how will you know i don't know maybe front page of the newspaper or something yeah i guess bringing the ocean and the acoustics to the center of culture being yeah. a person that's associated with that. And maybe, I think you talked to me before about like wanting to map the whole ocean bed of, of Namibia. Yeah, that would be a good way to identify more protected areas, more MPAs, because there are areas of the water that we don't know. We're still, we're still studying. Well, I feel very lucky to be meeting you, talking with you. I'm excited at the kind of things that we're going to create over the next couple of years with kelp blue with our carbon and just in conversation together thanks for teaching Fantastic. me so many things already hopefully yeah. you guys have learned a bit today about passive and active acoustics you've learned a little bit about the difference between hydrophones and echo sounders we're thinking yep. about the difference between static and moving devices trying to figure out what kind of modeling will be best quite a technical podcast but if you're interested in trying to unlock the value of the ocean then i think this is a real key in the middle of it for people at home who are taking this all in for the first time never thought about this living in a landlocked place what's the yeah. first one action you think they could take that might get them one step closer to this aquatic acoustic world i would encourage people to go to the beach there's so much on YouTube that you can watch if you just Google marine biology or uh, hydroacoustics. Will you send me one link and I can include it? You can include it, yeah. Looking at the uh, the course at the University of Namibia, you can visit the university. So in Namibia, you can visit the University of Namibia. Go to Wallfish Bay. There's a Namibian dolphin project in Wallfish Bay as well. Come to Kelp Blue Namibia. It's in Ludritz. Um, you know, always welcome. And Ukarapa, if people want to yeah. follow you... Where's the yes. best place to support and follow your journey as you grow into Namibia's best acoustician? My handle is Safe Haven One Day. Go on to the Kelp Blue website. You can also find some stuff over there. Let's go for it, yeah. I'm hoping that next time we make a piece of content, it will be all suited up going in the water in Namibia. Yes. 
doing something to get this uh, the next project up and away. I'm really hoping that we can make something real. But yeah. you're helping a lot in our development process, so we really Thank appreciate you. it. And I hope for everybody at home, they've learned something new about the ocean and about how we Me listen too. to it and uh, how that can change how we value it. And hopefully yeah. that's a key to, as you say, protecting Mother Earth. Thank you so much and hopefully Thank you. really soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Dave. I appreciate it. Not at all. And I'll yeah. see you guys all again soon on New Agreements, the Ocean Edition. Awesome. <laughs> Agreements, new agreements.